Hi children, welcome to Equit Learning. So this is uh, the second chapter for grade 11. So if you haven't watched my previous videos, I have separate uh, video playlist for each of the grade, like starting from grade six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So uh, those are having textbook uh, playlist separately, workbook uh, playlist separately. So this one is for grade 11, chapter two, right? So um, in this one, uh, it's about system development life cycle, right? New chapter, very easy chapter. And definitely for your O-level paper, you will get so many marks from this chapter. Uh, but the problem is, even though this is very easy, a lot of students and teachers really don't understand what this is about, right? They just uh, like memorize or they just uh, get the theory part, that's all. But uh, this is so practical uh, because this is what uh, really we do in the industry, right? So for example, software developers, program project managers, program managers, uh, QA people. So everybody who is in the industry is actually really doing this, right? So um, this chapter is uh, giving you the basic fundamental knowledge what you need for a system development, right? What is a system kind of, we, we learn theory part, but uh, when you're developing a system or a software, right? Simply, for example, it can be a shopping cart, it can be a library management system, it can be AR ticket booking system, any, any software, that, right? There are so many softwares running in this world. Right? Without software, nowadays, we cannot think about anything Right in every industry. It can be health, it can be financial, it can be agriculture, in education. So all these um, areas are actually um, now uh, with softwares. Right? So this software development, when you're doing it, we should know uh, like what are the ways to do it. Like Because these are not the must to follow, but if you follow these things, it would be great, right? For, for example, the testing methods, right? So in these things, uh, in the real industry, we are actually doing this, right? Uh, there are so many uh, uh, things advanced uh, than this, uh, what you have in your textbook, but this is a great start for you all, right? Okay, uh, first we'll uh, learn about uh, the concept of information system, right? So what is a system? Right. System is a collection of components, right? There are so many components and they work together, right? To achieve a specific task. For example, if you think about human body, right? There are so many systems, right? We have a respiratory system, digestion system, right? Blood circulatory system. So in science also you are learning human body as a system, right? So in this system, we have so many components and they work together. And uh, what, what is their task? Finally, the human body. They want to have the human living properly, right? So for that, they do so many things. The components work together. They interact together and uh, achieve a specific task, right? So simply, uh, that is how any system will work, okay? So now here, there are two figures in the textbook. Right, so in the first one, this is actually road construction machine, but in the first one, these components are not properly connected. Right, so will it achieve the target? No, will it uh, achieve the task? No, but in this second picture, all the interconnected components are there. Right, so then only this machine can uh, be used to uh, work, right, for the work of the construction. Okay, so in this one, actually, the machine is working as a system. So in a system, there are basically three components, right? You learn these things in uh, your grade 10 also in a computer. Uh, you can see these components, right? Input, process, output, right? So basically, input will uh, feed things to the system, and then the processing happens, and then you provide the output, right? That's how a normal uh, system will work with these components, right? They have given a nice example. Think about the school, right? So in a school, the system is the school, right? So what's the objective, right? I told you every system will have a task or will have an objective to achieve, right? So in, in a school, uh, the objective is to produce a responsible, worthwhile citizens, right, to the society, right, maybe educated plus 
people with skills right sports skills maybe right soft skills maybe right so uh, uh, preparing or producing uh, citizens who are skilled uh, and educated and with good uh, attitudes right all these things should be produced by a school so input is just children right from grade 1 onwards students will come they will know very basic things when they enter to the into an into to a school right so that's the input so what is the process so in the process so many things will happen right you have teachers will do the teaching right learning processes extracurricular activities so many other resources will interact with them right uh, like that the whole 13 years of a process is happening right not only teaching right so many other functions right like the prize giving maybe a uh, seal programs right so all these things will finally create the output of a good citizen right so that is a very nice example and second example think think about a weather forecasting system so that is a system what is the objective of a weather forecasting system right they want to forecast or predict the weather tomorrow tomorrow weather they have to predict how much rain uh, will it rain okay how many clouds like how how the humidity will work right those kind of information should be provided right so what are the inputs right so usually inputs will be like pressure temperature wind directions and past information definitely you have to take because then only you can get the patterns all these things will be input you process it right and the output is finally uh, the tomorrow's weather and right? that's the forecasting happens okay so information now we learn about the whole system concept now we are going to learn about information systems right a system which converts data into information right with the processing right we call it as a an information system right we learn this thing so data is raw facts right and information is the processed data right so uh, when it comes to information systems actually there are two main uh, categories you can classify manual information systems as well as computer based information systems right so sorry manual systems right manual system means in this system all the processes are done manually right for example they have given a very nice example uh, earlier days when when i was when i was school and this is how it happened so when a child is admitted to a school right they that student will get a registration number and there will be a file for that particular student all the personal information the birth certificate all these things will be stored there and all the skills maybe like the achievements maybe the bad stuff the the student does everything right will be recorded in that file right for a particular student right then final thing like when the stu uh, student is going to leave the school right one day right and that time the principal need to know about this student right he cannot uh, track every student in his head so he needs a progress report okay i want to know about this student maybe only for last previous year or for the full period of the school and what are the inputs process and output right input is the name of the student right this uh, maybe the students was entered uh, to the school in 2010 maybe right so that information uh, that uh, data will be given as then input right then what is the process in the back end right we need to find the index number then you have to find the personal file right then you have to extract all the information in this file and then with that you have to start preparing your report so final output will be process see after you process this you have to get the progress report of that particular student and so this is totally happen as a manual system so similar to that you can have a manual library system also right so there are so many books in cupboards right so students come uh, to the library they search for books and they take a book and they go to the librarian and librarian will have a big book right he will, he or she will enter all the information okay this student from this class has taken this book on this date right and that st student will go 
right after two weeks that student will return the books so again this a book needed to be updated by the librarian that uh, this student has returned the book. Now think this student is not returning the books, then they have to calculate the fine manually, right? And when the student come after three weeks, okay, one week he, he, he is late. So for that, they have to calculate the fine, right? So all these things are happening manually. So that is how a manual uh, system will work. Right. So when it comes to a computer-based system, right, computer-based information system, what is this? The, what is the difference is uh, this system converts data into information using a computer, right? Not manually. It's done by a computer. So that's why we call it as a computer-based information system. So um, now same uh, library example, if we take, right, we can do it as a computer-based system. Right. For example, all the books, right, we can enter by reading the barcode reader uh, of that particular book, or something like that. So we can enter all the books of the library into the computer system. Right. So when a student come, right, they can very easily search. They can just uh, there may be computers in the uh, library, so a student can come and enter the title of the book, Harry Potter. And so then it will tell, okay, there are three books available, right? Go and get from this particular rack itself. You can number the racks. So that's, it's very easy, the student can get the book. And then when the student go to the librarian, librarian no need to maintain a book, but they can, they, she can have a barcode reader, right? And you can read, the student may be also having some kind of a card, like an electronic card uh, with uh, the student's information. So all the tracking, can be easily done, right? When the student return books late, the fines will be automatically calculated, right? And um, the students who borrowed the books, all the lists, right? Who are delayed or who fail to return the books on due date, all this information you can take. Sometimes you can trigger an, trigger an email or a, a SMS to the students by reminding, okay, tomorrow you have to return a book or you are already delayed, right? Your fine is this one. You can do these kind of things. And eBooks also you can support in your computer-based uh, library system and uh, remote reservations, right? You don't have to come to the library. You can tell, okay, I want to reserve this book for two weeks. Uh, I cannot come today, but tomorrow I will come and pick, right? So you can reserve books, right? Uh, what about the, uh, you can integrate few systems together as well. For example, the computer-based library system can be uh, connected or networked with the main office where who delivers the final uh, leaving certificate, right? So when a student is want, uh, want asking for the leaving certificate, they can ensure whether that student has returned all the books. Right. This happened manually usually in the school, right? We have to, when we want to take the leaving certificate, they will give you a form. So you have to manually go to the library and then get the signature from the librarian. Okay, this student has not got any books. They, that student has already returned everything, right? So normally this happened manually, but if you have a computerized systems, you can do it very easily. So you can just uh, issue the leaving certificate with the help of the computer-based library system integrated, okay? So can you see uh, manual system and the computer-based system, when you compare these two, right, which is more efficient, which is more error-less, right? It's the computer-based information system. So errors are minimal, right? For example, the last point we discussed, when the librarian manually checked the book, to see whether that student has returned all the books before leave, uh, giving the leaving certificate, the librarian can definitely make a mistake and right? definitely may, will make an error sometimes. But if it's a computer-based system, errors are very less, right? And it's very efficient. Now think how much time the librarian has to spend, right, looking for the whole book and see whether this particular student has returned everything. It will take some time, but 
if you have uh, integrated all these things to a computer-based system, it will be like far no two seconds, right? It's very efficient. And a large amount of data uh, you can store in a very uh, small space with using database softwares, right? You don't have to maintain so many files and all these cabinets, uh, cabinets and racks and all these things. And security also you can ensure now, uh, for example, the librarian, if that person is not there, anybody can go and change that book. And there's a risk. Otherwise, you have to lock in a cupboard and go. But uh, if it is uh, with computer-based systems, everything like uh, login and passwords and backups, right? Hope you know about backups. You can secure all this data in another location. So if something happened to the original data, you can take that particular backup. So all these... Uh, benefits are there in a computer-based information system. So uh, this system development, right, usually follows a life cycle. Right? What is a life cycle? I hope you know how, a, how you get a butterfly, right? right? You don't get a butterfly suddenly, like there's a life cycle. You get the eggs and you get the uh, caterpillar like that. Only you get the finally the butterfly. Right? There's a life cycle. Right? Even for a human, we have a life cycle, right? We get a baby, kid, teenager, adult, uh, and an uh, older person, and then we die. So there's a life cycle for every, most of the things. So similarly, for a system development, also we have a life cycle. So in this life cycle, there are actually six steps for your syllabus. Right? So if you follow all the past papers, you may see different answers be different. But uh, make sure you follow your own syllabus where you have only six steps, right? So first thing is identification of requirements. I will explain each of these steps, but let me quickly tell what these are. Then you design, then you code, then you test and debug, and then you deploy the system, and finally you maintain it, right? We'll see what are these steps, right? So first thing is identification of requirements. Right now, uh, there may be two system developments. Right, one thing is like there is already manual system. Right now, we are going to introduce a computer-based system for that. Right, or there may be nothing, no system at all. Directly, you are going to implement a computer-based system. Sometimes there can be another scenario where there is old computer-based system. Now we are going to change it, you are going to implement a new computer-based system. So these kind of scenarios can be there, right? For any of these things, right? What is your benefit, like, what is your target, right? You have to have a very efficient uh, system which will give exact requirement what the user wants, right? When you develop a system, you cannot develop a system what you want. Right? You are not the final user. You have to think about the what final user really wants. Right. That's now this is very critical problem in industry. Right. The clients will come and ask for some system. Sometimes client even doesn't know what they really want. Right. So that is why this phase is very important because in this phase, we get together like the developers, the whole organization, managers, the client. Right. We all get together, the testers, we all get together and we identify, okay. What is really client want, right? The clients, what is their requirement? So only for that particular requirement, we have to give the product. Otherwise, if we develop something what we want, and if that doesn't match with the client's requirement, there will be a huge problem because all these things will have a cost, right? So the client will say, if that is not what he needs, he will never pay for it. Right, then there will be a huge problem, okay? So that is why uh, we have to understand, okay, what they really need. Because sometimes customer himself also doesn't know what they really want. So we, 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 with the collaboration only, we can uh, achieve this, okay? So to gather information about the requirements, we have a few methods. One thing is observation, right? Observation means uh, like, you go there and you uh, stay and check what's really happening. 
right? For example, if you are going to implement a library management system, you go to the library and you observe, okay, what happens, right? Customers, the students will come, they will search for books, they will take the books to the librarian, librarian will mark a book. So this process, the, per, the developers or the, usually we have business analysts, right? For this process, this thing, who will uh, gather the real requirement of the system. So they will go and observe and look what is really happening, right? So this is actually uh, not having the client direct involvement, right? So clients can continue their own systems, right? While we go and just observe, we are not disturbing the existing system. So that has good things as well as bad things. What's the good thing? The use the clients or the customers uh, don't get any effect, right? We as a development team or the we as the business analysis, we just go there and observe. But the problem is sometimes we do assumptions, right? We do assumptions. Sometimes we will not get the exact opinion of the final user, end user. Second thing is interviews, right? Interviews means you go and discuss things with other parties with the students in the library management system, you go and talk with the students, you go and talk with the librarian, you go and talk with the teachers, right? So many parties, you go one-on-one, one-to-one discussions, or you talk to a group, right? And you discussed. Sometimes this is more better than the observation rather than just observing because you can directly get the real opinions of the users, end users. Right? Sometimes students will say it's very hard to find books, right? Sometimes our students will go and hide books here and there, right? It's very hard to find books, okay? So these kind of problems you can directly get to know from the end users. Questionnaires are very important because you can collect answers. You can give some list of questions. You may have uh, found these kind of surveys sometimes. So they will ask, okay, uh, is manual search okay or you, do you prefer to have a computer-based search, right? What are the, uh, for example, what are the identification methods you want to have? Like, is it okay to have the fingerprints or is it okay to have an electronic card? Is it okay to have a face detection uh, system, right? You can ask from the end users in a questionnaire mode, like questions. So uh, next thing is document sample collection. So you can go and check the reports, files, which are already maintained, right? For example, if it's a library management system, again, you can go and check that book, which is available with the library. Or if you are going to talk about a supermarket or a grocery shop, you can check their bills, right? You can check their uh, books, which they maintain all these records of stocks and everything. So you can go and refer the documents available. Final thing is prototyping, right? You develop a sample model or a prototype of this proposed system, right? And we'll demonstrate. Or sometimes you allow them to use it for a small time. It's not the real system. It's just a prototype. Maybe some set of screenshots. Maybe some reports, what you're planning to uh, develop, right? So these things will give a better feedback from the end users. Okay, second, uh, second step, right? So we identify the requirements. That's the main thing, okay? For the library system, you identify these are the requirements, okay? Then you are going to design the solution because in this system, you have to identify, okay, what are the components? Okay, there should be online reservation system. There should be book lending system. A component, right? These are the main components of the library system. We should have a search facility, right? Search component, right? Find calculation component, right? So you identify all the components and their dependency with each of these subsystems, right? And you have to identify what are the softwares you are going to develop, use, right? How you are going to give the user interface. How about is the screens? For example, when you search, user has to give the title. Maybe from authors, you have to be able to search, right? So then you have to list down all the books available, right? All this UI, how, how it should look, huh? how, how to calculate the fine, 
right? You have to give, uh, is it automatically calculating how, how, what is the rates for one day if he delayed, what's the rate? So these things should be decided, okay? And uh, for example, if, if these systems are used by very old people, the colors, the size of the font, even these things you have to think about. And then you have to think about what are the hardware you have to need, right? Software components you have to need, right? For example, hardware, the barcode reader may be useful, right? For a library system. And uh, then you have to decide about what are the softwares you are going to do. Now you know only Pascal and you cannot tell, I'm only you no know Pascal, I'm going to do it only with Pascal, no. There are so many languages, C sharp, Java, so many advanced uh, stuff. Right, front end uh, separate technology stack we have. So all the software, what is the database you are going to use, right? All these things you have to worry. And finally about testing, how to do the testing, right? And uh, sometimes uh, even the about resources, how many developers, how many testers, all these things you have to think uh, before you start your development of the system, okay? Third one is the coding the solution, right? I, I don't like the name very much. It's not just coding. It's kind of an implementation of the system. Because this is the main implementation part, right? You are going to code your system, right? So you have to select the programming language, your technologies and everything you have actually initially identified in the design phase. But now you are going to do the real coding, right? Now, remember code, part is very important because your code should be simple and efficient, right? And if you write a proper code, right? Writing a code is very um, tricky thing, right? Otherwise, everybody will become software developers, right? It's a highly paid job and it's not very easy, right? You have to have a very good logical thinking and you have, when you're writing the code, right? You have to make sure now if somebody else is going to read because sometimes you will do the development and you will leave the organization. But next, somebody else will come and have to do the maintenance part, right? So for that, it should be well written, right? Now, uh, and when you're writing some logics, you have to make sure, can I reuse the same thing in another place rather than duplicating? Because if you duplicate same code everywhere, when you want to change something, a line, maybe a small thing, it's very hard. So much error prone. So you have to make sure you are writing well code and it's easy to read and it's very easy to understand, right? And uh, you know about comments and all these things. We have to put the comments and all, right? Otherwise it's very hard to read and understand sometimes other people's code. And uh, try to uh, reduce the duplication. Re try to reuse your code, right? All this concept you will learn if you really do some development, uh, coding and all, but I'm really speaking, but that's how you have to do the development. Then come the testing and debugging, right? So bugs, bug means when you uh, test a system, there are so many issues. We call it as a bug. You have an issue, right? Sometimes font is not proper, Really there, the function is not working as expected. For example, think about a shopping cart like Dara's and all. You add a product uh, to the shopping cart and then you go for the checkout and then the product vanishes. It's not in the basket, right? So a bug, there's a bug, there's issue. So the, in this phase, what you basically do is you identify what are the possible errors, right? And then you want to resolve it. Right? Because errors can happen in the planning, in the requirement gathering, right? in the uh, coding part itself. So many errors can happen in the uh, process. Right? Sometimes a QA person will detect, okay, this is not what user has asked. You have done a separate, different thing. So at this stage, at least we can correct it. Right? So uh, there are so many methods to test a system, right? mainly four things in your syllabus, unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. Unit testing means now in a system, I told you there are so many components separately. Like in the library management, you have a system, you have a search component, search in books. So that particular unit itself, you are testing. You give an input, you give a book title like Harry Potter and you search it, 
okay results are coming only that particular unit you are testing so that is called as unit testing similarly another testing like for example fine calculation test unit you are testing separately okay you uh, give a particular book and you give the due date and you calculate the rates okay so you separately you need twice you do the testing then comes the integration testing right in integration testing what happen is all these units you integrate and check whether integration works for example lending component and the fine calculation component you get to you combine it and test okay this student got the book on this date but returning on another date okay this is uh, the there is a fine so how much is the fine so you combine two units together and test like that so that is integration then comes system testing so all the components you have done testing and you integrate everything together and as a system hold together you are testing whether it really works okay uh, for example student search a book right he go to the uh, place and get the book come to the lending component enter all the information he take the books out right he return the book find calculations all things together the whole system the complete system is tested last one is acceptance testing now you understand the first three actually done the testing is done by developers and the qa or quality assurance engineers testers we call it. but acceptance testing or the we call it as user acceptance testing is actually carried out by the end users the librarian the students right they will finally test it right and this is the final client who pays for the system actually right who are the end users for the system right so these people will test it and they will check okay this is what i really want then they will approve sometimes they will ask for more improvements okay this is not what i really wanted i want a small change here right like that they will ask for changes uh, so finally if the particular customer or the client or the end user if they accept it only it's a successful delivery of a system then comes the uh, deployment of the system that means you go and install it in the particular place right so after testing after debugging right you go and do the deployment so deployment also there are four ways to do it direct parallel pilot and phased right so direct deployment means you have uh, now think you have a manual system running or maybe a old computer based system you totally terminate the old one you stop the old one you go and directly put your new system installed and you let the user to use the new system so no old system so what's the problem here there is a small problem sometimes because think your new system has issues now what will happen the total process will collapse why now you have stopped your old version no all system is running which was previously better now some customers and they coming and telling no no this new system is not going to work we want our older one it, it is better some customers really in the industry coming and telling like that so they prefer to have the old system no that is better so that is one problem in direct deployment because in the direct deployment you totally terminate the old one it's not functioning now you introduce the new system and if that has any issues or oh, then there is a problem understood that's why we have something called parallel deployment what happens here is existing system and the new system will run parallelly for a certain period and if the new system is good successful okay then only they will slowly terminate the old system right now you will think okay that's better right that's better then why we have direct deployment we can always go with the parallel deployment 
no, no, parallel deployment, there are issues again. What are the issues in parallel deployment? One thing is the cost. Okay, you have to run two systems together. These are not uh, free stuff, right? You have to have servers, you have to have uh, maintenance people, staff, right? So running two systems, you have to enter data for both systems at the same time. So it's so costly and not very efficient. That's why people go for direct deployment sometimes, right? So when you're running parallelly two systems, okay, it's very hard, it's costly. And sometimes there's another problem. Uh, the users, end users will never learn new one. Because every day, now every time, like you also have this problem, right? You don't want to change, right? That is something humans have. Humans don't want to change. They want to survive at the same, because that's very easy, comfortable. They don't want to change. So if you run both uh, your news and uh, existing old system together, what will happen? The users will not shift to new system. They will continuously use the old one. So you are not going to replace the new one in any day. Understood? So those are the, you have to think like, like this logically, right? What is direct deployment? You stop, you terminate your existing system and you install your new one. Parallel means both existing and new systems are running for a certain period. And if the new system is successful only, you stop the older one and continues. There's another deployment, pilot deployment. Now you have the few full new system, but you are a bit scared. Okay, there can be issues, there can be errors, there can be problems, and users are also not very comfortable with the new one. Okay, so I'm not going to deploy the whole thing in the whole, uh, my, for example, thing like Kiehl's, right? Or Cargill's, they have supermarkets in every provision every every province they have there are, there are so many areas right so they select few outlets which are not very busy right they select few out, outlets and they deploy into those selected outlets maybe only for one area maybe only for goal or mother like that understood and they will test they will check with end users, okay, this is good, right? We can so quickly move to other areas as well. Slowly they will move to other areas. Okay, I'm going to Kandy, I'm going to Colombo, I'm going to Nigambo like that. They will move on and they will cover the whole country. Not that they will install this new system to the whole country at once, understood? So in a pilot deployment, the newly created software or system will be installed only for a selected area, only for selected outlet, okay, selected component only, okay, selected area only. But here, remember, the whole system is there, okay. Some people now, if we think about McDonald's, like global uh, multinational organizations, they will go for a one country, okay, we'll go only for Sri Lanka. Right, we'll install this system to Sri Lanka only. If it's successful, we'll go for India, like that. But uh, uh, when it comes to phase deployment, it's different. The whole system is not there. They have small component, like one component, for example, libraries uh, in the library system, they have only search. And in the search also, they have only about dictionaries only. Our dictionary search works, okay. Then we add course books to that. Then we have fictions and everything. And okay, now search module is good. Then we'll go for the lending component. Component wise, like each stage will uh, lead to a final complete new system. So the old system is replaced slowly phase by phase face by face. Understood that a lot of students feel uncomfortable with this uh, pilot and phased deployments. The pilot one, the whole system is there, but it's deployed only into a selected area. But phase deployment means this whole system is not there. System is like divided into phases and each phase will be uh, moved on. 
right, to get the final system. Final uh, step. Now we identify the requirements, then we design, then we code, we test, debug, and we deploy. And finally, we are going to maintain. Okay, now the system is nicely installed and users are using. Is it done? No. Every day, user requirements will change. New requirements will come. Okay, so we have to care to them, right? So all the hardware, software, networks, everything should be maintained after service, kind of after sales service kind of thing. So uh, new bugs will come. So these bugs are actually not identified in the earlier stages. Our internal quality assurance test or QA people or the testers, they have not identified these bugs. Now new bugs are coming because when the real end users are using a system, new bugs are coming. So we have to cater them, right? Sometimes they tell, okay, the performance is not very good. Shall we go for a new technology, right? Uh, this is not very uh, user-friendly, right? Shall we go for a new system like that? Maintenance will always be there. Support we call in the industry usually. There are separate support teams to support or the maintain the existing software. So when it comes to system development life cycle, there are models, right? There are like kind of ways we do in the industry, right? So in your book, they have mentioned four things, waterfall model, iterative incremental model, prototyping model, and spiral model. All these are life cycle models, but in your syllabus, they have explained only the first two, right? Don't worry about other two. Those are for A-level IT, we have detailed explanations, but for the first two, very clear, and there's a clear difference. Please understand it properly, right? So first one, it's waterfall model, right? Why we call this model as a waterfall, right? Can you see in this, what happens is, now you have some steps, right? Hope you remember the steps. You have identification of requirements, planning or designing, you implement, right? You test and debug, you deploy and you maintain. So there are steps. In the waterfall method, what happens is these steps will follow one after the other, one after the other, right? So that means you identify all the requirements, then on you plan. After planning only, you implement. So after implementation, you never get new requirements again. You don't change your initial set of requirements. You implement it, you test it, you at this only you deploy and you deliver to the customer and finally you maintain. Now that is like a waterfall. That's why we call it as waterfall model. Can you see a great problem here? Yes, no. So here, can you see, I now think this uh, user requirement was gathered after two years only you are delivering, delivering the system. What will happen? The end user will tell, no, 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 this is what not I wanted. This is totally wrong. Because after giving the requirements, only after two years, the user is finally seeing the system at this stage. Then user will, end user will tell, no, this is what not I wanted. I'm not going to pay. Oh, this is outdated. Now, after two years, you are giving this. Now, my whole business has changed. With Corona and all, everything has changed. So this is not valid system. Can you see the risk of this uh, model? But these, these things are really used in the industry. I will tell why this is easy and uh, good. This one is very good if you have a very simple system. Maybe even a library system, you can think it's the requirements are not very changing, right? It's not very dynamic. It's very stable systems. So for stable, simple, small systems, where you know the requirements very clearly, you can go for this one because this is very less cost and very efficient maybe sometimes, okay? So, but main problem is with the time, because you go one after the other steps only and after final stage only, the end user sees what they have got. So that's the main problem, right? So that is why we have the second model. It's iterative incremental model, right? In the industry, we have different names like 
uh, the scrum process and all, how to do this. So what happened is in this one, we go incrementally, right? For example, we first identify the requirement of a one component. Think about a search component, search in books. So you identify the requirements of that component, you plan it, you analyze, design, implement, test, evolve, and you deploy and show to the customer. This may be happen very quickly, maybe within two weeks, maybe within a month. We call Scrum process also, that's the same thing. Scrum, we have every two weeks, we usually, usually every two weeks we'll release a production release so the end users can get the real working system. Ah, okay, then user will tell, no, no, this part should be changed. This part within a month, rather than waiting two years, within a month, within a two years, two weeks, we get to know, okay, this has to be changed. So we quickly, in the next period, next uh, scrum process, the next uh, thing, we change it. Okay, can you see? Now think both systems, need two years in here what happened after the requirement uh, gathering only after two years only we get it right but in the this method like uh, every month we are getting user feedback so we improve we change so when after two years we deliver the final thing it's not a surprise for the end user end user has already used it they know it, right? So in this model, a system is developed through repeated cycle, it's iterative and small portion at a time, incrementally, right? So it will start with a simple implementation of a small requirements and iteratively they improve until the complete system is there. So in this model, software developers learn through the system as well as end users are also very comfortable. They know what's happening. Every two weeks or every one month, I'm getting something. Okay, that is in line with my requirements. So they don't have to wait two years, okay? Yeah, so that is the end of this chapter, right? So in this chapter, we learn about a system, right? What are the components of a system? How information system can be divided into manual and computer-based, the differences, the benefits, and how to develop a, a software, what are the life cycle steps? And we learned about two models as well, right? So that's the most important thing. So definitely from this chapter, you will get questions for you all levels and you can score very easily because it's an easy chapter. Okay, so thank you for watching. So if you like um, my videos, please share, please do comment, right? And please subscribe as well. And if you want to join for my classes, please contact as well. So thank you very much.